I like to think of it as grounding NGSI students in the real world. Today we have Professor Ben Hatton, the instructor for the materials portion of Molecules and Materials, also known as MSC 160. Uh, my name is Ben Hatton, I'm a professor in material science and engineering here at U of T and I am uh, an instructor and the sort of overall course manager for MSC 160, uh, Molecules and Materials. I've been a professor for six years um, here at U of T. Um, I actually went to school in a lot of different places. I did my undergrad at Queens. Uh, I did a master's at Mac, and I actually did my PhD here at U of T. Um, and actually, I've been lucky. I've worked in a lot of places all over the world. I, I've worked in Japan. Uh, I worked at Bell Labs for a while before it was sort of kind of closed down as a research center. And then I was at Harvard for about five years uh, before I came here at U of T. Um, my research is. Uh, really about how to design the surfaces of materials uh, in particular. So we look a lot at how to use bio-inspiration for the, the design of materials to make non-wetting surfaces uh, that can repel ice and different kinds of uh, liquids. Uh, we look, work a lot on biomaterials, how to design materials that can interact um, with the human body. Um, and um, we look at things like self-assembly, how do you define interesting structures really design it from the bottom up. Okay, so what to expect in MSC 160? Well, the first half of the course, which is essentially molecules, is uh, an, kind of an introduction and review of, of, of general chemistry, which is an important thing to know for any uh, NGSI students. Um, and that's going to be talking about bonding, the structure of molecules, properties of molecules, uh, thermodynamics of, of molecules and solids. Uh, and maybe some aspects of chemical kinetics, so how do chemical reactions occur. So the course is divided in these two halves, and at the end of the first half there'll be essentially a midterm, which is more like an exam that covers that first half of the course. In the second half of the course, which is the part that I teach, we're going to talk about uh, material science, we're going to talk about um, the properties of materials and how do you use some different tools to choose materials for different applications. We're going to look a lot at mechanical properties of materials like strength and stiffness and fracture. Um, and in fact, that part of the course is going to be useful for your design uh, work in your Praxis um, projects. Um, from there we talk about crystal structures, we talk about microstructures, and we talk about uh, what makes the strength of materials the way it is. Um, and that means sort of what are the structures of alloys. Uh, one reason that alloys are important are things like lightweight materials that have very strong uh, overall performance but at, at very low weight. Uh, we see material metal performance important for things like biomaterial uh, implants. This is a hip implant that has to survive very long in the body while being biocompatible. Things like that. We're going to use some examples from the course. One thing that I like to center the course on, in fact, is the materials that you find inside your cell phone. Semiconductor electronics, uh, insulating materials, the mechanical properties of the glass. Uh, and I think what's interesting about material science is that we know some of these properties just from, and from the materials around us, but we're going to start to learn about what it is in the structure of materials that gives, it the, gives them these properties. So what to expect in the course? Uh, every week there'll be a tutorial. Uh, and you'll be divided into four groups. In the tutorial there'll be uh, problem sets that you hand in in class. Um, the TA for that tutorial will be available um, for questions that you have about the course material. Uh, my lecture notes will be put online um, for you to, to access outside of class. That being said, I always encourage students to take notes in class and don't just rely on the, that PDF copy of, of the notes. Uh, I will always be available every week for an hour for office hours. Uh, surprisingly, not many students come to office hours until at the, the very end of the course, just before the exam. So I always encourage students to try and come regularly, more regularly to office hours and ask questions that you may have about the course material. 
Uh, in terms of difficulty, I don't think any of the concepts in our course are, are, are that difficult, but there's a lot of material, a lot of information, which is generally true for first year. You get thrown with a lot of stuff. Uh, it's just tough to keep on top of it, but that's really the key. Just try and keep on top of things before it, it gets out of hand. Um, it's a bit of time management. It's a bit of just keeping sort of regular uh, study habits. Uh, if you feel like you're falling behind, don't hesitate to talk to your TAs or talk to me. Uh, you, I'm always available by email or in the, the weekly office hours. What is your favorite thing about the course? I think one of my favorite things about this course is that it, uh, I like to think of it as grounding NSI students in the real world. It's, uh, uh, NSI has a lot of uh, exposure to coding and uh, programming, data management and systems thinking, but this is the real world. This is the, the, the material world that is around us. We're learning about atoms and bonding and the properties of materials. Uh, and that's the world that we live in. So this is learning about the, the sort of the world around us, which I think is a really interesting part of the course. And we, I try to bring in as many sort of uh, case studies and examples from, from engineering uh, devices and technologies uh, that we're all sort of familiar with, but I'm going to highlight why the materials, in fact, are a key part of what makes that technology work. Uh, and that's really, I think, one of the most interesting parts of the course. Um, I think... Uh, Another really uh, favorite part of mine is, is interacting with students for sort of questions they have about design. So in the Praxis project uh, towards the end of the, the semester, uh, I meet with students all the time uh, with questions about what material would you choose for a different sort of design idea that they have. It could be mechanical properties like materials for the outdoors, you know, axe throwing, there's all kinds of crazy uh, sort of design projects that we have to think about and you know that's sometimes how we use the office hours is just to talk about sort of what choices of materials there are from polymers, plastics, uh, ceramics, metals, what are the really important ingredients that can make that, that idea work. What is your favorite memory from teaching this course? Uh, well one, one favorite memory I have is this uh, this assignment that was turned in a few years ago, written on a two by four. Uh, I don't see the mark on this, but uh, we will accept assignments on various types of materials, which I think is a great choice here. Um, uh, another favorite memory I have, I think is, uh, in general, I think is it's quite interesting, is that I tend to run into NCHI students uh, in random places, uh, you know, around campus, at the burrito place. You know, sometimes in Home Depot, you know. The weirdest one was like, I was camping up north in a small town. I was at a supermarket and uh, just checking out my stuff, minding my own business. And the the person at the cash was like, didn't you teach material science? And <laughs> I'm like, how far do I have to go to escape these people? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, that was funny. So it's... Uh, no, it's a great thing. There's, there's, there's a lot of students, uh, and it's great to see how everybody sort of uh, gets on after first year and, uh, and progresses after uh, MSA 160. Do you have any closing remarks or anything else you want to say to the first years that you might meet in the winter semester? Yeah. I would say one thing for, for first year students is, uh, I know it's hard, but Try not to get too obsessed about marks. I think it's a bit of a trap, especially in first year. Um, really, in the big picture, I don't think first year marks are quite that important uh, for a lot of things. It's really just important that you sort of get a good grip on what you're, what you've got to do to get through, um, and you know, use that experience in this broad range of uh, courses and information that you're getting to to try and figure out what what's the most exciting thing about it for you in, in choosing a sort of a different direction. Uh, getting through first year itself is excellent. That's a really an achievement. So I find some students get really obsessed about sort of small differences in marks and really in the big picture that's not really what it's about. You know, Later on, sure, like upper year averages are a bit more important for things like you know professional programs or grad school but um, Employers don't really care about marks. That's one thing to keep in mind. So they're more interested in what you what you're excited about, what you know, and what what you want to sort of keep doing in your career, uh, not really what your undergrad marks are.
So just a bit of advice. I don't know if you want to give them these bad habits. I know, <laughs> I'm sort of torn about it. So this is an assignment that somebody turned in on a 2x4. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs>